Okay guys, welcome back. So this episode is a continuation of the last carbon fiber episode where we were making our brake duct tubes. Now we are going to make the shroud. So this is the plug that we used uh, to try to make our mold last time and had that failure with the fiberglass. We're gonna take a slightly different route this time. We are going to use this as a male uh, mold and we are going to put the shroud over top and basically directly work off this part in carbon fiber so what i did is i went ahead and sprayed this with some free coat nc release agent uh so i'm going to get this whole thing uh all released up i need to add some wax to these joints here in the corner so we don't get any captured resin or anything like that on the part and then we're going to start the layup process um, so I'm going to do a multi-piece layup on this because I don't think that I can get a really nice tight fit uh, the carbon with this compounding curves in the, the tuck in in the center. So we're going to run like a top piece and then side pieces and then we're going to run webs over top and then for our cosmetic layer on top we're going to run uh, basically a piece that runs out to here and then an another piece that runs around each of the sides. So. Cosmetically, I'd like to have the cosmetic showing piece uh, against this surface, but that's not going to happen. So we are going to use uh, peel ply and all the traditional stuff that we were using in the previous videos uh, for vacuum infusion. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna post finish the peel plied surface afterwards by coating it again in resin. And then we are going to wet sand and finish it so that we have a nice cosmetic part on both sides. It won't be quite as nice uh, as if I made the female mold, but uh, you can't really see this part at all. So it's not even visible from, you know, the hood or underneath the hood. So we just want a good strong part uh, that's not too ugly, nice and cosmetically appealing, but I'm not worried about perfection uh, like I would be on an external body part. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let this free coat sort of tack up a little bit longer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get out the uh, carbon and start laying it up. Okay, so I got that laid up. <clears throat> There's about four layers on the top surface, about four layers on the outside, um, probably about three layers up in here. I use like a diamond pattern, um, like a pie cut pattern to try to stack on top, and make the most use of my scraps. Um, the top piece is all one piece. And for the most part, the twill looks pretty straight. I am getting a little bit of like print through from the material underneath that I hope will subside uh, where those pie cuts, the joints are showing, but I'm not really honestly that concerned about it uh, cosmetically. Um, overall, pretty good. So next thing up, we got to get some uh, peel ply on this guy. And then we're going to um, get our, you know, flow mesh and our vacuum bag and all that fun stuff set it up. So I'll get started on that now. Well, I infused the part, and unfortunately, it looks like we had an air leak in the bag somewhere, and I got a lot of bubbles throughout the part. So, we'll have to see how this one looks uh, when we pull it out of the bag. We might need an extra coat and some pinholes filled, but it's going to be a functional part. It's just not as good as what I really wanted. So, We'll see what it looks like here in about mm, 20 hours. Okay, so this part is going to be what we call race car pretty. So there are some pinholes throughout this thing or a couple dry spots I found. Um, all of that is because of the air bubble. So this is the inside that was against the uh, male mold. This is the outside that's against the peel ply. 
And we are going to coat this in another coat of resin. I'll try to wet this down, just try to show you what it will look like. You can see it doesn't take very well. You have to wet it out really good. But you can get a nice swell out of there. And when we wet sand that and polish it, it'll come up nice. Um, this side obviously is even better because uh, you have a better starting point. But we'll be able to get this part to wet out pretty nice once we're done. So just a little more epoxy work, put another coat of epoxy on it and that twill will really pop and it'll fill any of those little uh, air holes that we had. So overall, not too bad. Um, given the compromised vacuum bag and not wanting to stop there, um, but definitely not a perfect part. It's definitely not supercar pretty, it's race car pretty. Okay, so at first glance, this looks pretty good. Uh, the first coat wetted out nicely, and we do have some nice uh, twill pattern showing through, which is what I was hoping for. Um, I wasn't too sure how well it would show through like the peel ply texture. Unfortunately, I did make a mistake. So I wet sanded this part, and that was about three hours before I epoxy coated it. And then I also um, uh, put it in the oven for a little bit to try to cook off any ad additional moisture. So three hours plus uh, probably about half an hour at 200 degrees. I thought the part should be pretty dry. Well, evidently it wasn't, because if you look really close, you can see there's what we call blushing. So uh, some moisture content or blushing in the epoxy. So that is in there for good. You can't wet sand that out, that is underneath. Unfortunately, uh, that is not going to be cosmetically pretty, but uh, I think it's going to be discreet enough that you're not gonna notice. And the worst section of it is right here, and that is where our tube is gonna be cut in and grafted in, so not too much of a concern. The rest of the texture and stuff that you guys are seeing here, that's just from me using a brush to uh, apply the second coat of epoxy. That'll all go away when we wet sand it and is not a concern. So uh, overall, it looks pretty decent. I won't. I learned things not to make mistakes on the next one, but uh, none of these are catastrophic and visually we'll have a nice looking part, so I'm not too concerned. Okay, so I went and went to the CAD model and got my trim lines pulled out basically from the top surface to here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get suited up, uh, put on my Tyvek suit and respirator, cut that out. And then I think we're gonna be close to being ready to miter the tube. And then we'll uh, see what we need to cut notch wise uh, for the miter. Okay, so this is sort of how it's mocked up right now. Obviously, this will have a gap and everything. It won't be taped to the rotor, um, but this is gonna be mounted to this plate here. I'm just sort of checking to make sure my cuts are good and my clearances are good and everything looks nice. So the way this is gonna be set up is this edge is going to be just about right where it is. And that way you're not obstructing the vein flow. Um, and if you look, this is cut shorter. I'll rotate around than this side. So this side is longer and it's pushing air into the gap. Now this here rotor is actually a one piece uh, rotor. Uh, in the future, I plan on buying and upgrading two piece rotors, which are fed via veins from the inside. So this will work better with that design. Uh, but sorry, the camera's getting a little wonky. But I just wanna show you, we have good clearance here. Everything looks nice. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed laying out my cut for the mitered tube. 
and then uh, we'll get that sort of cut and placed up and just check because we need to make sure that when we turn the wheel, turn it here, that our tube, mitered tube, doesn't get into the upper A-arm. So, but this is overall just sort of the fitment and I uh, hope you guys get an idea now that you see it on the truck, what it's going to look like. Okay, so I got it cut out and I uh, just have it held on right now with some masking tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work up some uh, epoxy real quick. I'm just gonna use a regular standard temperature epoxy and try to bond it and leave the masking tape on the back for now. That's just gonna sort of lock it into place. Then once, uh, sorry, my kid's screaming in the background. Once that's locked into place, I'm going to use my carbon fiber tape and then we'll uh, vacuum bag reinforcement tape about one inch wide all around this surface and bond the two. Um, but I just want it to be nice and stable. So I'm gonna use some quick set epoxy with the masking tape and get it locked into place. Okay, so I have tape from the inside and I went ahead and put a coat of epoxy on it. So we'll let this cure overnight and then uh, it'll need some wet sanding because uh, obviously the coat of epoxy adds a little bit of surface roughness. But this should get us a good temporary bond uh, between the tube and the uh, plate. And then what we'll do is once this is dried off, we'll pull the masking tape out and then we'll reinforce it from the inside with some carbon fiber tape and high temperature epoxy. So let it cure up. Okay guys, so it's the next day. You can see here the epoxy joined in nicely. The part is stuck, uh, which is always good, um, but it's not reinforced. So right now it's just stuck on there and it's pretty solid, but I'm guessing if you give it a real good whack, it'd probably pop that tube off. So what we here have here is some solar composites carbon fiber tape. And what I did is I just coated this with some 3M uh, Instatac or you know number 77. And I'm gonna cut little strips here, about probably four inches long, and use that to stick it to the inside of the mold. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, masking tape the edges uh, to the rest of the part, and then uh, use resin to uh, wet out the carbon fiber between the two pieces of masking tape. I need to use the masking tape because while this is going to tack um, before it's wetted, as soon as it wets out, it has a tendency to sort of release and flop off. So I'm gonna use the tack uh, to stick it, then use some just masking tape here to hold it in place, and then we're just gonna brush on some resin, and that should hold it uh, plenty good. I just can't get the uh, masking tape wet with resin, otherwise it will also release. So. After you're done, you should have like a little quarter inch piece that's not gonna be wetted um, that was covered with the uh, masking tape, but that's gonna be fine. We can just take a razor blade and trim that off and we should be good. So uh, let's get started. Okay, there we go. So we got about two layers all the way around. We got the masking tape holding the edges. It's tacked down well with the 3M spray. So I'm gonna go ahead and start wetting it out. And I'm just gonna try to watch and not get all the way to the edge. I'm gonna use a real fine brush and uh, just wet it out, you know, probably within a quarter inch of that tape line. And then when we're done, I'll uh, obviously I'll cure, we'll pull the masking tape off and then we'll just trim off the loose hairs. But uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so it's the next day and I'm pretty happy with this. So uh, everything stayed tacked in nice and tight. The tape peeled right out like I was hoping it would. And uh, yeah, this turned out good. So um, I'm just gonna let it cure up a little bit longer. It's it's hard to touch, but what I'm gonna do is like, I need to cut and buff the, the surface with some sandpaper and then we're gonna you know buff it out and get it looking nice. But this is pretty much the finished part other than just the cosmetic uh, prettying it up. This is it. So I just needed to sand all the drips and stuff because like I said, I put an extra coat of epoxy on it to sort of wet it out a little bit more. 
and uh, we're gonna have a pretty legit nice part. And if I wish you guys could feel the weight, even with the extra cosmetic um, resin coats, which isn't ideal, uh, even with those coats, still a stupid light part. So this one turned out pretty good. Um, obviously, uh, I I mentioned in the beginning of this, I had this blushing, which is not cosmetically pretty. Um, we know to avoid that next time. The next part I expect fully to come out nicer than this. Um, but listen, it's a break shroud. Like you're never gonna see this thing uh, other than like some Instagram photos. So whatever, it's fine. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead, wet sand and buff this. And then I think that's gonna be it. And uh, we'll do a little reveal here after I'm all done. And uh, we'll kill the episode, but that's pretty much how you do it. Carbon fiber brake duct, custom from a 3D printed pattern. Not bad.